Welcome to another video from EarnPed.com. I'm Stevie B. Happy to have you all with us. Got plenty of sips and smacks for y'all. Let's get right to it. Um, so Easter Mayhem 2022 just ended. I am on the Cronin doing some repair skilling, trying to get that defense up. I'm going to be headed to Next Island to shoot some videos there. I will be bouncing back and forth between Cali. Princess is also on Cali. Um, I will be doing EarnPed.com withdrawal, so will she. Go ahead and shoot me a private message. I'll get a hold of her if I'm off planet to make arrangements. Uh, I have some videos about Next Island that are going to be being released over the next couple of days. I also have some other videos that I'm headed there to shoot about some cool missions you guys will like. So today, I want to talk to you guys about land areas and land area ownership. And I know this is something that a lot of players don't care about because they'll never get to that level. But you need to know this information so you understand things like Crystal Palace shares and New Treasure Island shares and uh, Arcadia Underground deeds and stuff like that. And this has to do with an email I got from a player the other day and I found that they didn't understand a lot of this stuff and I think there's a lot of players that don't because they just never get to that level. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. So let's start off with the share system. You have Crystal Palace shares, New Treasure Island shares, and Ancient Greek shares with are, which are traded on the Entropy Exchange, right? You buy them there, you sell them there, and then the income goes straight to you. Then like the level above that, you have deeds, and most players are fairly familiar with this also. You've got uh, Arcadia Underground deeds, Arcadia Moon deeds, Compet deeds, stuff like that. And then uh, you have the Deed of All deeds, uh, CLD, Calypso Land deeds, right? And those aren't traded on an exchange. Those are bought and sold on auction, or they're traded player to player through the private trade system, and they actually go into your carried inventory by your ped card. You can also put them in storage. Um, and again, the money comes directly to you every single payout. Um, now, we're talking about the level of beyond that. We're talking about the level, the highest level you can get to in game, which is actually owning an entire land area. So, the, the land area is also traded by a deed, but it is a single deed. Like there's one deed that would allow you to own an entire apartment, there is one deed that allows you to own an entire land area. And you guys will see how this circles back to like Crystal Palace and New Treasure Island here in a second. So the difference with owning an entire land area is a couple of things. First of all, there's only one deed for control of the entire land area. So the first thing you have to do is if you're buying it from a player, you meet up, the player gives you the deed, they put their deed in the window, you put your pet in the window, you hit trade, you get the deed, they get the pet. Now, that's the same as if you were buying Arcadia Underground Deeds, right? Or Arcadia Moon Deeds. The difference is there's an additional step. Once you have the deed in your possession, you physically have to go to the land area. And there's what is called a land area marker. It's a giant, slim, tower-looking thing. Uh, you've probably seen it at Royal Club. You've probably seen it at OLA 42 because it's pretty close uh, to where people hang out at both those areas, pretty close to the teleporters and the revive terminals. You have to interact with that land area marker with the deed in your carried inventory. It's usually, it always, not usually, going to be in the same uh, sector as your ped card, whether it's in your carried inventory or storage. But when you have physically got the deed in your carried inventory, you have to go to the land area marker and you have to interact with it. The reason you have to do that is a couple of things. A, once you do that, it is going to allow the ped that is generated on the land area to be put into your account. If you get the deed from the player that currently owns it, and now you own it, but you don't go interact with the land marker, they're going to keep getting the revenue that's generated on the land, not you. So once you have that deed in your possession, you have to go interact with that land area marker. That way the ped comes to you. Number two, interacting with that land area marker, that lets you put fertilizer in so the mobs are generated. It also lets you set the mining rates for, or the tax rates for mining and hunting. So the previous owner might have had it set at 8% tax, you want to lower it to 3 or they may have had it at 3, you want to raise it to 5 or you might want to put hunting at 3 and mining at 2%. Um, that is all done through the land area marker. This is also where you would put DNA for a new creature. Now here's a couple of things for those who are wondering you're not really going to be able to get a new DNA for a new mob. It's just not going to happen. Uh, most of, virtually all of the DNAs that you would want are long gone. Now you can still make uh, exo DNA, you can still make Argonaut DNA, 
but you're not going to make a DNA for a new creature that people are actually going to want to hunt. You're not going to be able to get a DNA kit for a creature that's going to be worth putting on a land area at this point. That's, that's gone. That was long done before I was even ever in game. Uh, I know there is one player who I'm very good friends with that has a mob DNA set that he's been trying to put together for years. And he's got what we think is all the requisite pieces to make the DNA cartridge, but there's still something missing, or there's still some part of the equation that hasn't been figured out. Um, I actually need to ask them about that and find out what is keeping the DNA from being created, because we should have everything, and it would be a really cool DNA for a really cool mob. But needless to say, if you're looking to buy a land area, you would have to find a land area that already has the mob on it you want. You already, that already has the mob on it that's highly desirable. Now, once you've gone through all this, it's not as easy as just setting it and forgetting it. Even if you have a land area that has a mob on it that people would like to hunt, you now have to give them a reason to come hunt that mob. So, a couple of things before we get to that. Not all land areas are the same. In fact, most land areas that are out there are dead land areas. Most land areas that are out there for sale are not worth even buying. You have to look at the land area. How close is it to a teleporter? Does it have a teleporter already on it? Now, you can buy a land area without a teleporter and pay Mindark $7,000 at 70,000 ped, and they'll put a, a teleporter on it. But if you're paying $10,000 to $20,000 for the land area, which is usually the given range, and it doesn't have a teleporter on it, you, that's another $7,000. That is a huge, like, 50 to 33% of the total investment just to have that teleporter put there. Is it really worth it? So if you're looking to buy a land area, not only does it have to have a mob that is something that you know people won't want to come hunt, but it's got to be close to a teleporter or already have a teleporter on it because the price for putting a new teleporter on it is prohibitively expensive. Um, at one point, I believe there was also a way to pay Mindark. I believe it was like 50,000 ped, which is 5,000 US dollars to get a custom global message whenever somebody hunts on your land. Well, is that something that already comes with the land area? Is that something that was already done by a prior owner? Or is that something you're going to have to fork out money out of pocket to do? So that's a big consideration. There's a lot of different things that are to be considered. Uh, some land areas also have a little cabin type thing on them that is controlled by a separate deed so if you're doing a transaction where you're going to buy a land area does that little cabin area come with it or is that separate is that not part of the cell it usually is if it is be sure that you get the deed to that also because it's controlled by a separate deed now even once you've gotten past all this once you've found a land area that is actually worth owning that is close to a teleporter or not insanely hard to get to, that players want to come to to hunt that creature, you have to go a step further. Um, so example by land areas that are actually worth owning that are close to teleporters, uh, OLA42 is a good example. Uh, you can see the setup with the teleporter and all that stuff right there close to it, the revive terminal stuff. Another good one is Royal Club. You can see how the teleporter is really close to everything even though it's like right across the line. Um, and how the cabins are right there. So you'll be able to see all that. Now you'll know what I'm talking about when you go to those two places. But now you have to give people a reason to come hunt there. The reason is, it's taxed, right? So if you're looking at a 5% tax rate, that might not seem like a lot, but that can be huge when you're talking player returns. So for as a landowner, the way you generate money is by people doing activity, be it mining or hunting on your land. If you have a 5% tax rate and I come kill a creature and my loot is 100 ped, the landowner is going to get 5 ped, I'm going to get 95. Now, there is some debate when it comes to the actual mechanics of how that works, but I'm going to leave that out because that's a whole different story for a whole different day. Is it you got 95 and the landowner got 5, or is it so the total loot was 100, or was it really different? It's a long calculation, it's a long story. Was the actual loot 95 and then the player got 95 and then your loot came in somewhere else. It's it's a math question. But let's ignore that for a second. So why would I come to your land area to hunt Ambu at Royal Club when I can go somewhere else and hunt Ambu on a non-tax land area for free? Why would I do that? Why would I just give you several percent for no apparent reason to come hunt there instead of come hunt somewhere else? 
I wouldn't, right? So once you own the land area, it's not as easy as set it and forget it the vast majority of the time. You still have to give the players a reason to come hunt there, to come mine there. And not all land areas have the same mining ores and in matters. Uh, they set it up so that they have different ores and in matters on different lands. So you have to know what is worth mining, what people are going to want to come mine, and is it even on that land area. Um, so this is why you see a lot of players in game that own land areas that create their own events, like their own little mini mission chains or their own events. Now there are some land areas out there that do have unique mission chains. Um, a good one is on Arcadia. Uh, I believe it's the Cool Cats. The Cool Cats mission chain has some great evade rewards and it's repeatable. However, that was set up with the internal system. That wasn't something you could like pay to have done. And so it's not something where Mindark is going to create a mission chain for you. And now with Codex, since we've done away with mission chains and everything's been replaced with Codex, that's really not going to happen. You're not going to really be able to get your own NPC or create your own mission chain. Um, so that is something that would have to already come with the land area and already be built into the game. And for this reason, we see land area owners create their own events that make people want to come hunt, make people want to come mine. And it's something that offsets the tax that they're being charged by giving them something potentially even better. So some of the events that I've seen in the past are something like um, for every global you get, you get one point and it's automatically tracked through Entropia Life or you have to have a screenshot or they've got some kind of a tracking software. Um, you can collect points to redeem rare items like there was a level 5 mining finder amplifier I think that was available through an event and you had to have like a million points to get it. So you would have had to hit a million globals. Okay, we'll do the math there. If you've got to hit a million globals in order to redeem it, how much are you going to have to spend? How much are you going to have to cycle? How long is that going to take if you're getting one point of global? There's some events where it's like uh, a global is worth X amount of points. You can use the points to redeem items. But also uh, there's like a jackpot that goes up every month. Uh, so like every global adds one ped to the jackpot. And if you hit a Hoff for uh, 12,121.12 ped, then you would win the jackpot, which is, you know, currently 3,500 ped and goes up one ped for each global that's hit on the land area. And then it rolls over month to month. So they've come up with all different kinds of events uh, to make people want to come hunt on their land area. And that's what you have to do, because even if it's close to a teleporter, even if it's easy to get to, even if it's got a mob that people want to hunt, that might have a good mission chain or might have, give good codex rewards and preferably something that drops really good loot with a chance at an uber item you've still got to give them a reason to come hunt the mob on your particular land area instead of going somewhere else to hunt it why would i come hunt on your area when i can go do it for free somewhere else or you've got to have an interesting shtick that makes people want to show up so like a uh, good example is royal club some people go there to hunt Ambu because Ambu's potentially drop shopkeeper pads, right? But most people go there for the sweat circles. Well, what ends up happening at the sweat circles? Yes, 99% of the mobs are turreted and die and the land area owner doesn't make anything. However, it's not costing them anything to let people have a giant sweat circle all the time, right? And what ends up happening is every now and then you get somebody who is a hunter that actually kills the mob when it goes dry. Now, it's a very, very low volume business model um, but it's also not costing them anything. The players are just going there naturally creating the sweat circles and they're naturally every now and then going to have somebody who's willing to kill the mob and that's going to generate uh, money for the land area, uh, whoever owns Royal Club. I believe it's Cheese Investment Fund if I remember correctly. But it's a very low volume thing. Now they could change that up and I think they did this once. They said, hey, if anybody uh, hits a shopkeeper pad, Hoff, out of an Ambu on Royal Club, uh, they usually go for 5,000 ped markup. We'll pay you 7,500 ped markup for the first two people this month that loot a shopkeeper pad on Royal Club land area. Well, if that got a whole lot of hunters to come to Royal Club and start shooting Ambu left and right, obviously they're generating a lot of tax. So they're willing to pay that extra markup. It's almost like a, a quote-unquote prize for the person who gets that shopkeeper pad because they're just going to take the tax that they're generating take the extra 2,500 ped above and beyond the normal markup out of that tax, and they're hoping that they're going to generate way more tax, plus they're hoping they're going to be able to get their hands on two shopkeeper pads, right? 
So you have to create an event. That requires tracking the event, staying up to date on the event. Uh, it usually requires posting it on Planet Calypso forum and other forums, getting the word out to players, uh, use, sometimes even using the in-game event system uh, to sell tickets to the event. So it's not just as easy as set it and forget it. And this is why there were some land areas that were extremely valuable. So the first one that comes to mind is Crystal Palace. Crystal Palace, no, it wasn't super easy to get to. You had to fly there. But once you were there, you were there. And this is why it was such a profit machine for Buzz and why it's still such a profit machine now. It had, and still does have, unique creatures on it that cannot be found anywhere else. If you want to hunt them, you have to go there to hunt them. You do not have another option. And they had their own mission chain. Now they dropped great loot with a chance at a Uber item, plus they had their own unique mission chain. And then there was another step. You could hunt a certain creature, and after doing that for a certain amount of time, then you got access to another part of Crystal Palace, to the caves, where the Ubers just want to grind day and night for that rare loot that has demand, that has markup, and hoping for those rare Uber items, right? Now, that really was sit and forget it. Pretty much, Buzz didn't have to do anything. All he had to do was be sure that there was enough fertilizer to keep the mob spawned, and that was it. Crystal Palace took care of itself. No need to make an event. No need to do a lot of promotion. It was just there. It was designed to be an integral part of the game where players would just naturally want to come. That is why, whenever it became publicly traded, it was so obvious that this has insane amounts of value to it that's that's why the shares sold out so quick that's why you saw the pop in the price because it was literally set it and forget it virtually no other land area is like that none that's what made crystal palace unique and that's why when new treasure island came out it was like okay yeah it's a land area and yeah now it's being turned into shares it's been a da dead land area for like 10 years there wasn't really special mobs there wasn't really something that you couldn't go hunt somewhere else for free. There wasn't really mobs that dropped great loot or had great markup. There weren't events that were constantly being run on it. So what was the draw? Well, the draw was if you looked at that little cliff note at the bottom, it said, uh, subject to change, we may have some space mobs spawn there. Well, it wasn't guaranteed. Yeah, they ended up doing it, and yeah, they've pretty much kept them there, but they could pull that at any time. Then what's the draw? There isn't one. You would need some kind of an event going on pretty much around the clock in order to really draw people to New Treasure Island. If it wasn't for the displayers, displatters, however you say it, New Treasure Island shares wouldn't be paying out anything. It would just be a dead land area still. Crystal Palace was unique in that it had unique mobs, unique mission chains, rare loot, uber items possible to loot. Um, even once you did all the mission chains, then you got access to the caves where the ubers wanted to grind away day and night. It was set it and forget it. No other land areas like that. Land areas take lots of promotion. It takes a lot to get people to come pay you a tax to hunt and mine on your land, even when it's easy to get to, even when there's a teleporter right there or right close, even when there's a mob that people want to hunt. Why would I go hunt Ambu at Royal Club to try and loot a shopkeeper pad when there's plenty of places on Calypso I can go hunt Ambu for free? Makes no sense, right? So... If you're looking at buying a land area, you have to take all these things into consideration because all these things help determine the value of the land area. And when you're looking at buying shares like New Treasure Island, Ancient Greece, Crystal Palace, you need to know how these things work. You need to know all the things that go into running a land area and making it profitable so you can make a good decision. This is why Crystal Palace shares were a no-brainer. It's been said it and forget it for day, from day one. No event needed, everything absolutely ideal in every way. And it's why New Treasure Island was such a disaster from day one. As a land area, had you ran an event every single day, yeah, you might have been able to attract players. But without an event, it was useless. Unless they put that rare space mob, the displatters, displayers, whatever they are on it. Once they put those on it, now people are going to want to come hunt, but it's not because the land area is super valuable. It's because now it has a mob on it that you can't really get anywhere else. So you've got to come here and just grind the crap out of it for that good loot and that chance of that Uber item, right? So that's the only thing that makes New Treasure Island valuable. It didn't used to have that, and they can take that away from it any time. If they take that away, the land area is absolutely worthless. So knowing how a land area works from... It, the ownership side, which is a, a level that most players never get to, helps you make smarter decisions 
about buying your shares in your deeds at the lower levels. Um, same thing when it comes to, to regular deeds like Arcadia Underground and Moon. So just because they make a deed doesn't make it valuable. People go to Arcadia Underground and the revenue is generated from the tax that's generated there. But people go there because they want to hunt the unique mobs, either for the mission rewards and the codex rewards, or for the loot that they drop, or to get those adjusted, improved, and modified uh, nanos for the Viceroy armor, uh, for any number of reasons. Um, but there's unique mobs, there's unique loot, there's rare loot with demand and markup, so that's why players go there. Um, what is there about Compet? Nothing. Because Compet is, is literally dead. Compet deeds are traded on auction and traded privately player to player. They backed the Compet app that came out for iPhone and iOS several years ago. It paid out one time, and then it was an utter flop. It failed miserably, and Compet never paid out again. The app was literally pulled. The game does not exist anymore. So why do the deeds still trade on auction? Well, there was a time, and that window has long since passed, where you could trade your Compet deeds for Arcadia Underground deeds, I believe it was. It was like a 3-to-1 trade or something like that. And some players either didn't log in or didn't know about it, and there are players who still buy them off auction because they see that people are still stupid enough to, to buy them. And then they realize that it's a dead game. It's like owning a share of the uh, uh, East India Trading Company, the world's first publicly traded corporation. Well, yeah, you can buy the share, and I guess it has some historical relevance, but the company's been out of existence for 500 years. There's not going to be any dividends paid. There's not going to be any growth because the company doesn't exist anymore. Well, Compet is the exact same way. So the only people who buy them off auction are people who don't know any better. And the people who sell them off auction are people who bought them not knowing any better and then turn around and are trying to dump them to somebody else. Personally, I don't even think they should be in game. I think Mindark should just get rid of them completely so that that stops happening and we quit having new players that get, get duped by it. Um, so knowing how the land areas function at a high level lets you look at your decisions on a smaller level. This is why ancient Greece was a horrible idea when it hit the share system. There was nothing about ancient Greece that was worth going and doing. Then they created the Gorgon instance, and all of a sudden you have an instance where, cool, unique creatures, unique loot, markup loot, upgradable armor system, Okay, super. Now you've got some Ubers that are going to come grind that out. That didn't suddenly make it worth four hundred to seven hundred fifty thousand dollars. So what did they do? They went in and they said, "Hey, we're having success." Uh, it turns out that if you have rare loot and chance at rare Uber items, the Ubers will come grind this kind of stuff. Uh, it seems that the business model is as simple as it, it always seemed. Uh, it seems that you don't have to be super genius to figure this out. So they make the Moloch instance. High-level players doing missions to get access to an instance that has a unique creature that drops high demand, high markup loot with a chance at an Uber item. So now they've got that being grinded out 24 hours a day by Ubers. They've got the Gorgon instance being grinded out 24 hours a day by uh, Uber players. Now all of a sudden the ancient Greece shares are actually paying out fairly reliably. And there's actually some value there. I still don't believe it's you know four hundred dollars to $750,000, but there's some value there. So knowing how the land area system functions gives you a really good idea of how to make smarter choices at a lower level. At the highest level, if you want to own an entire land area, a good land area is going to cost you $15,000 plus, and probably plus. You're going to want something that already has a cabin on it, already has a teleporter on it, or right next to it. You're going to want something that already has a rare creature, uh, preferably a unique one, preferably one that you cannot find somewhere else on Calypso for free, and preferably that another land area owner doesn't have on their land. And then you're going to have to give people a reason to come hunt there. You're going to have to put on a rock-in event of some sort, and you're going to have to advertise the crap out of it. It's not passive. Everybody I know that owns a land area, they literally have to spend hours a day managing it. Um, it's just like any other business. You can't set it and forget it. So knowing that, I hope that gives you guys a little bit of insight into kind of how the land area thing works. Um, this is the reason that Crystal Palace had to be turned into a share system. It was sold as a land area. And when Buzz wanted to sell it, there was somebody that was willing to pay an astronomical amount of money to buy it. But they realized there was no land area marker. So he could trade them the deed, but they had no way to go interact with the land area marker. So they couldn't put fertilizer in to keep the mob spawned. And the ped would have still gone to Buzz and not to the new owner. So when he got with Mindark about this and said, hey, why wasn't there a land area marker on Crystal Palace? Their answer was, well, we didn't really ever expect you to sell it. Um, we can set it up so that they can interact with it and, you know, 
put the fertilizer in, keep the mob spawned, and the pet will go to them instead of you. But the transaction is so large, you're talking such a large dollar amount, we're going to have to go through all kinds of regulatory stuff to approve the transaction. It's not just private between player to player because of the type of money you're talking about. We're going to have to see tax returns. We're going to have to verify how they earn the money, that it's not being laundered. Okay, well, even if the player had been willing to do that and subject, subject themselves to that just in order to buy Crystal Palace, let's say they wanted to sell 10 years down the road, would another buyer have been willing to subject themselves to that? Probably not. And it just wasn't a good situation that in order to sell Crystal Palace privately, there had to be all this regulatory review by MindArt. So that is how the share system came to be. That is why they created the share system, was to allow Buzz to sell without it being one ginormous transaction to one owner. That is why Crystal Palace is now a share, and that's why it is now set up the way it is. So I hope this video has been informative for those of you looking for information on land area ownership. I also hope that knowing by about land areas and, and kind of how it works, that will help the rest of you make smarter decisions when it comes to buying your shares and your smaller deeds, like your Arcadia Underground deed and your Moon deed. Uh, the Moon should have been w way, way, way more developed and had way, way, way more reasons to be there before they ever released a deed for it. So kind of same situation as Ancient Greece. So I hope that this information is very, very helpful. And I hope it answers a lot of questions and just helps you guys make smarter decisions all around. Um, I've got a lot more videos coming for you guys in the next couple of days. I'm going to be headed back to Next Island pretty quick to shoot a couple more videos there. I've got a couple already uploaded that will be auto-releasing over the next few days. And we're just going to start already gearing up for Summer Mayhem 2022. It's going to be right around the corner with Summer Migration. So for now, I've been Stevie B. Smack, smack, sip, sip. Y'all know the rest. Uh, head over to earnped.com because when you earn, we earn. That's obviously the best way you guys can help support us. We do appreciate all the support that we've been getting from everybody. Hit that bell icon and the like button because there's always somebody hating on us hitting the dislike button. And we'll see you guys later this week. Take care, Stevies.